Magnus Carlsen is currently the best chess player in the world and arguably the best chess player of all time. In today's video I'm going to show you one of, if not the best, chess game he's ever played. With the white pieces we have Magnus Carlsen with a rating of 2484 and with the black pieces we have Ernst Siebke with a rating of 2474. Both of, the, both of them are pretty, pretty close to GM level. Uh, Magnus was already making himself noticed. In fact, maybe this is the tournament, tournament vacancy 2004, where Magnus, or when people started noticing Magnus, because he, he was still very young, but he was having very good results, and this is not this is not the exception. So let's get going with the game. Magnus played e4, Black played c6, the Karokan d4, d5, and already here we have kind of a deviation from the, the way we play this as white nowadays. So Magnus played knight c3, which is very much played nowadays. e5 is the other big option, in fact, probably most popular. After bishop f5, many lines are possible here, but I think the most trendy nowadays is h4, to which after h5, bishop d3, bishop takes, queen takes, e6. Black has the idea of playing queen a5, queen a6, trading queens, and it's a very comfortable game for black, but it's uh, chances for both sides. After knight c3, though, uh, d takes e4 was played, knight takes e4. Nowadays, knight f6 is played, but bishop f5 was played. Very popular back then in 2004. Knight g3 in response of white, bishop g6, h4 played by Magnus, threatening h5. Black says, okay, let's, let's not blunder a bishop. Knight f3, knight d7, h5, bishop h7, that's why you played h6. Bishop d3, you trade the bishops, queen takes d3, e6, bishop f4. Now, another little bit of a pause here. If you're a theor theoretician and you like theory... Nowadays, people play bishop d2, and bishop f4 back then was considered to be more active, but the reason why it's not played anymore is because now black, well, they discovered that black can play queen a5, bishop d2, and bishop b4. Why is this annoying? Well, I know you're going to say, David, okay, first of all, I can block, but even if I don't block, let's say I just play knight e4, well, what's wrong with this? Well, first of all, um, you don't want to trade the bishop, you want to keep the bishop because it keeps chances in the king's side. So c3 is the most logical response. After bishop e7, you're going to say, David, you get to attack the queen again. So c4, but now queen c7, and you know what? c4 is actually something you don't want in this position. Why? Because let's say you play queens at castling. In this position already, b5 would be a little bit annoying. Because it would create a weakness on d5, for instance, if you take knight b6, knight d5. And very often, actually, black doesn't take back. Black just wants open files against the king. So c4, the inclusion of c4 is not beneficial for white. That's kind of in a nutshell why people don't play bishop f4 anymore, and they play bishop d2. But bishop f4 was played. Back then they didn't know all of this, of course. Black played knight gf6. Castle queenside. Bishop e7, very natural. Everyone's developing pieces. And knight e4. Once again, nowadays people play king b1, preparing knight e4. Castles, knight e4 then. Takes, takes, knight f6, queen e2, queen d5. The common idea of this Karakan stuff, you want to trade queens on e4 after... So a potential c4, people play knight e5, queen e4, takes, takes, rook h1, and this is a very comfortable game for white, um, being that, well, okay, you can't take because rook d2 is going to trap that knight, and after something like knight f6, yeah, it's just, it's just a plus after g4. There's still a game, uh, I mean, of course, it's not losing for black or anything, it's just a comfortable edge for white, which is what you want out of the opening as white, because you, you play first. But Magnus won knight e4 first. Uh, directly, I should say, and the reason why this is not the best, and once again, I repeat, this is 2004, so people were not as advanced as, or theory were not as advanced, was not as advanced as it is nowadays, so 94 is not the best, but it's difficult to know why. Black played queen a5, the reason why it's not the best is because black can play knight takes e4, queen takes e4, knight f6, queen e2, and queen d5, already threatening queen takes e2, that's why king b1 before was the best. Why is this so annoying, David? Well, let's say you defend it with c4. Queen a5, bothering again. Queen e4 is actually fine as well, but queen a5, bothering the pawn again. Already king b1 is a blunder because of queen f5, so you have to play a3, and then b5 again. You don't want your pawn on c4, it creates, it creates counterplay for black. If you push this pawn, look at this. Now there's a big nice hole on d5 for the knight. So, um, that's what black should have played, but black played queen a5. King b1, castles takes, takes, and in this position you have two plans. You have central control and just improving your pieces a little, little, little by little, sorry, or you can launch a kingside attack. Now, most of you would think, okay, well, 
let's launch a kingside attack. I like the word attack. I like attacking my opponent. Attacking is easier than defending. So let's go for g4. And this is absolutely playable. Uh, after knight takes g4, rook dg1, black has to find queen f5, and then g5. And after that, black is a nice game after something like this. There's actually a game, Polgar against Anand. Uh, in the same tournament they were playing, or Magnus and Ernst was, were playing in this game, but one year before, Vacancy 2003. But this is very difficult to know as black, so you can give it a try if you're playing this with white. Magnus went for something a little bit more um, squeeze-like, and you can already tell that he was going to be a, an endgame strong player from his very young age in 2004. 95. Central, central control, improving your position a little by little, there's no rush. Black play rook d8. Um, c5 is still not a problem, in fact this is a mistake, because after queen g3, threatening bishop takes h6, king h8 and queen f3, all of a sudden b7 is attacked, g4, g5 is coming, black is uncoordinated, black wasn't ready to strike in the center. If you're going to strike in the center, you should put all your pieces in good squares, and then you can strike in the center. Um, so knight e5, rook a d8 was played by Ernst, good call. And after queen e2, which is not lo no longer played anymore, queen g3 and queen b3 are kind of other popular alternatives, but queen e2, this is now a very tricky position for black. So Magnus already kind of, in this same spirit of improving your position little by little, moves the queen back outside of the x-ray of the rook, and gets ready for a tactic, a very common motive in this Karakhan structures. What is that motive? Well, you're going to get to see it. Black played c5. This is a big mistake. Black should have played um, queen b6 first, and after c3, c5. Only then. This would have been a good game for black. But c5 directly doesn't work. Now, the reason why this is not working is because of a common motive. If you look at the tactics, if you look at this queen e2 move, it's actually getting ready for something very tricky. That's That being knight g6. Knight g6 is forking the rook and the bishop. So, for example, if you were to move the rook, let's get that out of the way first, you just win a pawn. You can't take back, the rook is hanging. And if, you, if you, you're materialistic and you take first just for the sake of getting a pawn, bishop d6. And you're losing. So, you can't, you can't just ignore the knight, you have to take it, this is what happened in the game. But now, believe it or not, this is losing by force. This is the reason why this is such a nice game. Queen takes e6, check. Black is a check. Black has to do something. If you put, if you block, you just lose like this. So king h8 was played, and h takes g6. Not queen takes e7. That would run into knight d5. You're not losing right away. You can play bishop d2, but black survives. And not only that, black has actually pretty good chances after rook takes d4. So king h8. You don't take the bishop. You take h takes g6, and you're down a piece as Magnus. But the reason why this is good is because if you look at king safety. This king is nice and safe. The only potential piece that could attack this, this king is the queen, and it, that's not a real threat. Queen takes a2 is nothing to be scared of. But if you look at black's king, black's king has to be worried about 1, the queen, 2, the pawn, 3, the bishop, 4, the rook. I mean, bishop takes h6 is a big threat. And in fact, on that last note, black said, okay, I'm going to try to stop that. And the reason why I said try, you can already tell, is that knight g8, which is what, what Ernst played, now Magnus says, okay, I don't care about you stopping my threat. I'm going to take it either, either way. And yeah, after this, this is the reason why this is a forced win. Right one, once knight g6 happens, this is a forced win after f takes g6. So bishop takes h6 was played. g takes h6. If you take with the knight, it's even worse. You take and take on e7. And good luck stopping h7. Queen h7, I should say. So g takes h6 was played. And Magnus still sacrificed on h6. Uh, if you play king g7, of course, this is mate. So knight takes h6 was played. Queen takes e7. And once again, queen h7 is a big threat. So black has only one real way of stopping that. And that's knight f7. This is what black played. If we look at this position, white is momentarily down a piece and a rook. The reason why this is winning for white, though, regard well, regardless of that, is that the king's safety. It's just all about the king's safety. This is what I say over and over. What matters the most is no material, the, what matters the most is tactics, activity, and, well, overall, king safety, which is pretty much whoever checkmates first wins, right? In this position, after g takes f7, if we take into account all of the things we talked about, well, first of all, this king is has no pawns around, what we call bodyguards, so it makes it more exposed. Second of all, we have a pawn on f7, which you can argue it's one point, because that's their general rule, but I disagree with that right now. That pawn is not one point. That pawn is 
covering good squares, one step away from promoting potentially, and just just limiting Black's position. Um, so that that point is pretty strong activity wise. That that's more than one point. We should evaluate that like that. And not only that, but this rook is going to come into the attack. And once we start calculating a little bit, we notice other things that, for instance, this rook on d8, the extra rook black has is not doing anything. And the queen on a5, probably the most important activity uh, factor in this position is that the queen is far away. This queen on a5 is just in the other side of the board. And all those things considered, make se it makes sense that white is winning. Yeah. So king g7 was played. Um... Yeah, there's yeah, okay there's not much you can try for instance if you tried queen b6 instead queen e5 check comes and then rook h1 and then after something like this rook h3 rook g3 you start picking up more stuff um yeah there's this line for instance something like this and queen h6 there, that's not much that's that's not much better right you lose so king g7 was tried i think this is the best try and after rook d3 once again rook lifting like this there's not much to be done in this black. You're going to say, David, no, back rank. No, that's not back rank, don't worry. Black tried something around that, rook d6, claiming that if you take the rook, there will be back rank. But of course, Magnus had all of this calculated. Rook g3 check was played. Rook g6, queen e5 check. For instance, actually, if you go king h7, um, there's a mate like this. And we're going to see a similar mate very soon. Queen g7 at the end. So, rook g6, queen e5. If black goes king h7, once again, there's queen h5. I mean, you have to cover with the rook. If not, you're just losing the rook. And then, once again, we got that checkmate. So queen e5, king takes f7. Queen f5 check. And in this position, black has either to move the, the king or block. If you move the king, check. You're going to lose material and eventually lose the game because your king is just in the middle. And black, is, white is checking, checking, checking. If your pieces are active and you're taking material with checks, that's a good sign. So black decided to defend like this, but now the final image and the reason why this game is so beautiful. Queen d7, mate. Magnus Carlsen played this game incredibly. Many people started looking at him and, and potentially started thinking of him as the future world champion. Amazing how he became so strong so early in his age, so early in his life. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, any suggestions, if you had anything to say to add to this game, I would be very happy to read you. Subscribe, give a like, that would really, really support me. And I will continue to create this kind of videos that are hopefully full of useful tips and, and, and tricks. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.